Chapter 12, Enter the Void. This reminds me of the last Airbender finale. That combustion lady will pick us off one by one. You have a better idea how to save the airbenders? Gotta go in from the ground. Scale the side of the mountain and take them off guard. No, if their lava bender spots us, he'll melt the mountainside and us with it. I'll disguise myself as a lost hiker, and once I'm in the temple, I'll distract the red lotus with my bird calls. Hmm, it could work. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Very reasonable. The only plan that will work is for me to give myself up. What? Cora, no. We'll figure out another way. I think the problem with that thinking is like, that assumes that he's even going to do what he says he's going to do. He is principled, but he's principled in a way that he's going to do whatever is right for him at any moment to achieve his goal. And because of the unknown in this, I think it's much better to stick to principles, right? Like, that's what Tenzin did in the last episode. He easily could have just saved himself and his family by turning Korra in, but instead he recognized it was wrong and he was willing to risk his own well-being to do what he felt was right. It's a really difficult situation, but Zaheer's, you know, Zaheer forced it. So you just have to make that difficult choice, I guess. I don't know. The world has been out of balance for far too long. It needs the Air Nation back again. I mean, admittedly, the Airbender Nation is very important. I get where Korra's coming from. Also, she is the Avatar, so she's not going in helpless, although I'm sure Zaheer has some idea of how he's going to neutralize her. That is the perfect fortress. Here's what I want you to do. Right, he has it all worked out already. Ugh, I hope he and Nag are doing okay back in Zalfu. <laughs> is that a scarf? Oh no! Bird dog and rat thingy! Is Grandma fit to take care of the pets? I say we split into two teams. Mako, Bolin, and Asami will take the airship up to the temple. Meanwhile, my metal benders, Tanrock, Lin, and I will get into position below Lahima's Peak. So we're doing all the plans at the Let same time. your earthly tether. Enter the void, empty, and become Come wind. Thank you, Pali, for everything. He expects to die. The years apart only made my love for you stronger. She's so tall. Just like you saved me from becoming that warlord's killing machine when I was a girl. You've shown me what true freedom means. So some exposition there in Pali. I guess he rescued her from just being like a slave for a, for a warlord. I really appreciate how much they've done for these characters in terms of humanizing them. I wish we had gotten more. And that's not a criticism. I mean, I think they've done more they can be expected given this format and the time limitations. They're just so interesting and they're so compelling as villains. And they actually seem reasonable as individuals, not in terms of their goals, but like, you know, their behavior. It's a shame they didn't have more time with them. Like, I feel like they have the backstories written in their head. It just didn't happen in the show. Yeah, don't forget about Bolin. Come on. He's not very fond of world leaders. I can handle him. It seems like it's just a rite of passage for Water Tribe members to have an epic battle with your father. Must have been some fight. It was. Mako, what's going on? Hurts to see, but I'm glad he's all right. They're here, but so is the Lava Bender. Tell Gazan to let the Airbenders go. Not until you turn yourself over. I'm tempted to say like Korra could take these two, and Mako and Asami could take Gazan. Well, I guess Kazan could just kill the airbenders. And Korra's not guaranteed to win. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. And don't bother trying to metal bend out of these. They're platinum. Told you, buy stock and platinum. It's okay, Tenzin. We're about to get you out of here. Oh, no! You should have checked. Fooled me too. They're not here. Don't turn yourself over. Can't trust people like this. Chief, get Korra out of there now. Go, go! Ah, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Oh, that's why. You can trust the here. You can trust him to be himself and do what he thinks is right. But what he thinks is right has nothing to do with Korra's well-being or the airbender's well-being. I love how she's fighting so well with these chains on. Damn. I love that double air move that Zaheer does. Oh, you think you're gonna deal with two Beifong sisters? Get the hell out of here. No. Get him, Lin and Suyin. You guys are irrelevant. <laughs> it's nice to see the Beifong sisters finally united <laughs> in a common cause. Things like this really put your petty squabbles into perspective, I guess. He can do that technique too? That was awesome. Mumble, and this is your time. Where are the airbenders? No, no. Oh, that's right, he still has that leverage. All the bison got scared off during the attack. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I think I know another way out. Hold in. Is it metal? That's a lot of lava. <laughs> is it just me? Or is it uh, getting really warm in here? 
Oops. Oh, this is not good. No, it is not. Don't just stand there. Her dad's no joke. Say hello to the Earth Queen for me. Oh yeah, he lost his water. I'm gonna draw her fire. You take her out. Come and get me, you third eye freak. Man, Lin just this is two seasons now. She just puts the whole thing on her shoulders. Sometime today. <gasps> that was dirty. Oh, they didn't show it, but she's dead. Did they show it? They didn't show it, right? But she died. Please. Huh, they cut it. But yeah, she's definitely dead. Well, Zaheer, let go your earthly tether. What can I say? Enter the void, empty, and become wind. It does suck, though, because they'd otherwise be great people if they weren't, you know, crazy. If you're Zaheer, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much you've practiced on attachment. That hurts. This is reading into it a lot, but who knows how much Pali even really cared about the cause. I mean, she just talked about, you know, her being freed from a warlord, but I'm sure part of her emotion and sentiment for, for this is just her loving Zaheer and wanting to make him happy and like, you know, just being grateful for being rescued. It's rare to find people who are actually really motivated purely by causes. You know, there's always some emotional tie in there somewhere. So many of our core beliefs are predictable based on like our family's beliefs and our region and it's part of the difficulty of even talking about things because everyone has their own emotional ties to them. So he was obviously very kind to Pali and his friends and they really loved each other and identified with each other as a group and he gave them meaning as people. You know, there's just like so many things involved and you can imagine it going other ways because of that. Like you can imagine Pali and Kazan and Minghua and I don't know about Zaheer because he's kind of the leader. You can imagine them like aligning themselves with Korra in another universe. And Zaheer's not, not too happy now. Ooh, air KO. It's over, Zaheer. Let go your earthly tether. Release the avatar. Enter the void. This is your last warning. Empty and become wind. No, stop! Oh my god. He can fly like Guru Lahima. Did he just fly? <laughs> my reaction exactly. Guess he doesn't need a ride. Whoa, I thought he was gonna die. The exchange he had in the beginning with Pali, I thought that was setting him up to die, but actually it was setting her up to die and him up to fly. I wonder to what extent Pali's death influenced that. Does her death make it easier or harder? He has less to be attached to, but also I feel like the reality of it would just be he would be consumed by earthly rage. So to be able to do that in that moment, pretty, pretty strong commitment to that ideal. Yeah, well, he definitely became wind. This way! Dig up, dig up. <laughs> now what? Time for Tenzin to become wind. Kai. Come on, Kai. Whoa. Yes. You're a lava bender. Awesome. That's also cool. Hey, you guys need a lift? And there's Kai. <laughs> I joked about that. I joked about him being a lava bender. But there you go. We were so focused on metal bending that we completely missed the prospect of him being a lava bender. Well, better the temple than the airbenders. Thank you, Captain. You can call me Guvira. Okay, so I know that that's the villain of season four. Because I've, I've heard the name Guvira before. And also, that was like super sinister music that they just played. Guvira. There you go, meeting the season four villain. Well, he got to do his bird calls at least. Then out of nowhere, he lava bends. I knew you had the potential for something big. <laughs> something big. That giant lady met up with some people who took the airbenders into the caves. Was it Kazan and Mingwa? No, there were four more of them. Oh, there's other. I came back here, hoping you guys would show up. Good job, Kai. Sorry for ever giving you a hard time. That's okay. I probably deserved it. Yeah, you kind of did. <laughs> Cute. Character growth. Short but good scene. I am no longer bound to this earth by worldly desires. Where's Pali? She sacrificed her life for our cause. Now let's make sure it wasn't in vain. The whole enlightenment thing is tough for like the letting go of earthly desires. <laughs> this keeps coming up on this channel. This is like, I have a long history with this idea. Interestingly, I think Zaheer comes closest to a view 
that I like about this kind of thing, like letting go of attachment and or some form of enlightenment or something like that. Because I think the way it's so often represented is like that you see the world and life as meaningless or an illusion or a lie or whatever. And then that view somehow is supposed to allow you to be free. I think seeking to attain a state that is in any way a denial of any one thing is not something that appeals to me. In fact, I, I can say that more broadly, I don't think there's any part of experience that should be cast aside. People often talk about negative emotions like fear and anger. And there's this idea that these are bad things. And I strongly disagree with this idea. Like, I don't think any of these things are bad. I think these things only are negatives if they get in your way. So like fear, for example, could be a great thing if you put fear behind you and let it push you forward. Anger can be a great thing in certain moments to keep you safe. None of those things are bad intrinsically. It's, it's the application of those that's important. And so I think is living as a human and, and life. And I don't think humanity or one's experience as a human should be cast aside as insignificant. I think the key is having mastery over all those elements and, and having them all work for you and having the freedom and flexibility and personal power to shift between them as they suit you. And so I think that's actually one cool thing about what Zaheer has reached. He's no longer dictated by these things, at least as far as the show's suggesting. He's still very much acting in the world towards his goal and following his principles, but there's nothing keeping him rooted. He's free. And him flying is a physical representation of that freedom. Also, as kind of a side note, I think it's cool that they allow their villain to reach that kind of enlightenment. That gives him powers that even people like Aang and Tenzin didn't have. But then again, Aang and Tenzin were not capable of that. Like Tenzin's very, very much attached to certain things, as was Aang. It also sets him counter to many of the characters in significant ways. Like this whole episode and a lot of the show, for that matter, has been about these characters having strong attachments to things. You killed my father. Nah, he's fine. I understand your grief. I also lost someone I love today. Bring the poison. What we still don't know what he wants from Korra, right? Poison bending. Well, that's not fair. They shouldn't be allowed to make episodes this short. It's not fair to the viewer. I don't care about the animator's wrists. <laughs> it's time. I need more. I need more Korra now, but I can't. But I'll see you next week for the grand finale.